get there. And what they needed was the Torah and faith in Hashem. They needed the Torah. And what, what Torah does is it, it's the basis to our religion. It keeps, it keeps everything, it's, it's, it's like the foundation to religion, and it keeps everything going. And you find it says one, and, and another thing that you need, and the Torah can't just stand by itself. Another thing that you need is you have to have faith in yourself. Because without faith in yourself, you're not going to have the confidence to be a Jew. You're not going to have the confidence to stand up for what you believe in. The first example of someone that did this was um, Nachshon. Exhibit. Now, Sean was a man who stood around tons of other Jews, and he, and he, he was a man that stood in front of tons of other Jews who didn't believe in jumping into the, into the yam, and what he did was he jumped in, and he, his water cup filled into his neck, and, and, and he believed so much in what Hashem had for him, and he believed that Hashem would take care of him, and that's when the water split, and the Pasuk is, the Bayaminu Basham Mosham Do, so that's a pasu that has to do with Kriyad Yamsu. And it's a bit of a tricky uh, pasu because obviously Bayaminu Basham, then we have the Bayaminu Moshe. Are we really, uh, it's, it's, it gets tricky, are we idolizing Moshe? What Bayaminu Moshe is, we know Moshe, he wholeheartedly had Emunah and Hashem. And that's what allowed him to be the leader, and he's our role model. And with that Emunah, he instilled it with us. And with that, that took us out of Egypt. And that was, the, that was when we were a new nation, a new nation forged with this Emunah to move forward. And the reason why Moshe is discussed here and not Nachshon is because Moshe was a leading example and as was Nachshon. This is Moshe, he was in the Teva as a baby and this really calls, into, uh, calls the faith of his mother Yocheved. Um, this is a time of persecution of the Jewish, of the Jewish boys thrown into the Nile and here she, has, she puts her own child in a boat and leaves him on the Nile. And to think of a connection between a mother and a newborn child how hard that must have been, but to have faith that God would watch this child must was incredible. And we see where where this child takes where what he becomes is Moshe Rabbeinu. So big deal. Uh, you want to go? Alright, again, okay, now it's not, again. We call into we call the question on the bond between a father and his son. Your son, your only son, the son, your beloved son. Take him and sacrifice. And this is the tenth test. This is after nine crazy tests. Leave your hometown from where you're born. Just leave this final test. Sacrifice your your one, your only, your beloved son. And we see Abraham who doesn't ask questions and he's. Calm the entire time he's going up with his son, his son says, Father, I see the, the materials for the korban, where is the korban? And he says, don't worry, Hashem will provide for us. And ultimately, we do see it was a test he passed, and Hashem gave him the aisle, but the immense faith it must have taken for this. Okay, so another example, when B'nai Israel were in the desert, and they came to a place where all the water was, was bitter, was sour, no one could drink it. So, B'nai Israel complained, B'nai Israel complained, and Moshe prayed to Hashem, and the immense emunah that he had, so God threw down a tree, and Moshe throws the tree into the water, and, and all of a sudden, the water it sweetens, it becomes sweet and, and delicious, the, the, the amount of emunah that, that Moshe had, that God could just send in a tree, and, and make the, the water set, uh, sweet, it's just, it's, it's incredible. Yes. Okay, well. yeah. Yeah, go, yeah, go. Yeah. Okay, fine. Hamabul, Noah's Ark. Noah, Noah believed in, um, Noah had faith in Hashem when he said there's going to be a Mabul. He believed that something really bad was going to happen. And he stood against the crowd once again and he said, I have faith and I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do what Hashem told me to do. And he built the Teva. And what happened was, it, for 40 days and 40 nights it rained. And that's, and that's the, the power of mind. Mind was uh, able to damage everything around him. And But what he did was he had faith and the boat was able to save him and, and threw water. And because he had faith, the water saved him. But people that didn't have faith in Hashem, they perished. And we see Maim as destructive. But remember, this destruction, it ended up, it was, it was a cleansing also. It allowed us to renew. And here we see the cleansing aspect of water. The cure for the Kohanim for the one Beit HaMikdash. So water, they would wash their hands and their feet. So this water is cleansing physically the hands and their feet from the outside. Because they walk around barefoot. But also, it's a spiritual cleansing. Water always has a spiritual cleansing. So why, why are they cleansing themselves spiritually? They're about to go into Beit HaMikdash. They're about to do the Holy of Holiest works. 
for God. They're showing their belief in God. Some of these rules make this korban, do this and this, and the chukim. But to do them wholeheartedly oh. with emunah, be spiritually cleansed for Hashem is emunah. Wait, 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 wait. I'm I'm not not okay. As they were, as they walked through the the, the yeah, walls, so. and and the, as they walked through, through with the with the crowd and okay, and as they walked through Yamsu, what happened was there's a midrash that says that Prachim and Herot were were on the walls. Hashem not only gave them gave them a nest of taking them out of Mitzrayim and bringing them to a better land, but He also gave them He gave them an, uh, like another gift. He gave them He gave them a, a preview of what they're going to see in the future. He had the Prachim and Perot, and the waves are supposed to the waves symbolize the the the, the waves and the Prachim that came by. And that's okay, the fish the fish show the universal um, importance of faith. Faith is universal all around the world. Every, all the Jews around the world believe in the Torah. That's why we have different languages of faith on the fish. Uh -huh. It's a design, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. The it's together. Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, No, no. Okay. Okay. Here's, um... You go straight into the world, because we have okay. the unifying theme of faith. Okay, here we just said that we have a unifying theme of faith, that faith is all around the world, and here it says, faith is all around us. The mind connects everywhere in the world. People are connected through water. That's how they travel, that's how they get by. Everywhere you see that, that the water is connecting people. People need water to sustain life, and that's where, that's where you see it, all around us. Here's another teva because you see the importance of how important the mind was that it was destructive, but it saved them all. And now again, as we move out of the pre out of the past, we move into the present time. This is the future, where our emunah has brought us thousands of years later as the Jewish nation. And we'll start with this wall right here. These, the, we saw in the past these fantastic, amazing acts of emunah by our forefathers. But not everybody is a Moshe Rabbeinu. But still, as Jews, we have an emunah, and we express this emunah in God in our everyday actions. Okay. Where do you go? No. Okay. Uh, you, could you do yeah, this one? Is here just a couple of, of concepts that we saw that we have to do in modern times that show our faith, such as Nefilaya Daim, or Tzitzit, that just show that there are these ways that we're supposed to connect to Hashem. For example, Tzitzit, what it tells us that we have to have strands of Tzitzit that is Midrash and in the Gemara that says that when you look at the Tzitzit on the Tzitzit, it reminds you of the blue color of the sea. And when you look at the sea, it reminds you of the beauty of the sky. And when you look at the sky, it constantly reminds you of, of God and who He is. That is Borei Olam, Melech Machayim Melachim, that is constantly watching us and He gives us constant faith that He's, he, he's around us and He's watching us. Things that may even seem strange, like a kippah, like, what is it, you wear a little skull cap on your head, you walk around, it's different, but when you're showing, I'm a Jew and I'm proud of who I am, I'm proud of my faith, it's my unifying factor that gives me this brother, this camaraderie with my fellow Jews, and it's kept my forefathers going, it keeps me going. And mikveh also, we have, like we talked about with the Banim, they had, we had a purifying aspect of water, and now we have a mikveh, and so again, you... Immerse yourself and water Careful. cleanses you. Careful. Okay, so today the importance of the mikveh and cleansing yourself and mind is, is mainly a mitzvah for women. And what it does is it, it gives them a constant reminder every month that they're, they're purifying themselves and they're purifying themselves for Hashem and having faith in Hashem. And that gives them, that gives them the, 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 the motivation to keep a Jewish home, to keep kosher in the family, to keep Shabbat, and remind us that Hashem is there and Hashem is... Hashem is, keeps the faith, and that's what keeps the house going. And this is one of the things that. And also, if somebody converts, one of the biggest things is a vet. So it's also we're spiritually tending and we're accepting him into our nation. Our, our Jew, that's like the, the step four, bringing him in. Also, so another added aspect. Okay, this is a pasuk from Tehillim. It's the first pasuk in Tehillim. Okay, so what it's saying is in order to be a sadiq, in order to be successful, what you need is mine. And the tree needs mine, and it comes from the roots, and it grows up, and it grows beautiful prachim. And the same way that a tree needs that, we need that. And in order to, to, to stay alive, we need... We need water to stay alive, and this is why we, we fit an eco commission also, because you need water. You need to conserve water, and you need to save water, and it's a really important aspect, because without it, we need water. 90% of our body is filled with it, and that's why it's so important.
and as we as we continue our proverbial journey from the past to the future, what is one of the great one of the most common way now of travel? The airplane. Do you think travel? You an airplane? I don't know. Most of the time of day, whatever thing of an airplane, but you can get here, there, no problem like that. So here, and again with our emuna, where our airplanes have brought us, we have Israel, focusing on Israel. Our, we came out of Egypt. To, it, we'd wandered in the desert for 40 years and we got to Israel. And then after we had our exile, we've been wandering in Galut for years and years. But now we have Israel, and to a point where some of us take it for granted. We can hop on a plane, we have a summer, we have a week to spend in Israel. We can go ride camels, we can visit the Kota, we can visit Jerusalem, we can visit the Dead Sea. It's, it's vacation now, but to think, a Jewish homeland, a place we can call home because of our emunah, is fantastic. And that's our hotel over there. It symbolizes uh, another thing in Israel. That, that it, it shows like it's like a main monument of peace. And, and, and if anybody's thirsty, have a sip of our Amuna fountain. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, we have a <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, judges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The presentation was your yeah, very plan. Thank you. Your seminar plan. What is this?